What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today we're going to jump into one of my favorite topics and I actually talked about this a few weeks ago when I made a video about how to be financially stable and it kind of blew up. I didn't realize there was a lot of interest for how to be financially stable until I made the video, which made me think, I wonder how many people are out there feeling financially unstable. And you know, it's crazy because in my last video that I made about financial stability, I said I hear a lot of people say these exact words. I just want to be financially stable. And that poses the question like, what does financially stable even mean to you? So that's the first part. And I want to make this video to anybody who feels financially unstable. I think that everyone feels this at some point in their lives, but the question always boils down to why. Whenever I think back to the times where I actually did feel financially unstable, it really only boiled down to a couple of things and that was either not making enough money or I was just comparing myself to someone else and I was assuming a certain amount of money that they were making that I wasn't making. Those were my reasons and I had to get out of that. I had to look into my situation look like, okay, if I'm not making the amount of money I want to be making, what is my plan to get there? And as far as comparing myself to other people and what they were making or really what I thought they were making, what that came down to was realizing I need to just look in the mirror and I need to constantly compete with myself. There is no competing with anybody else in this world, period. If I'm doing better than I was doing yesterday, I'm winning. If I'm doing better than I was doing last year, I'm winning. I just learned that I have to look at myself in the mirror and compare myself to myself and that's it. You don't get discouraged when you compare yourself to what you did in the past. Not like you do when you compare yourself to other people. I made 50K last year, I made 70K this year. Cool, I'm winning. I made 50K last year, I'm making 55 this year. I'm winning. I have one more stream of income than I had last year. I'm winning. I'm better at my career than I was last year. I'm winning. What I found is that my mind doesn't play as many tricks on me when I'm comparing myself to myself as opposed to comparing myself to other people. That's not necessarily the theme of this video. I just wanted to share a quick story with you that, hey, I felt financially unstable before and this is why I felt financially unstable and this is what I did about it. And those are just a few hypothetical examples, but that's how I encourage you to look at it. It doesn't matter how big or how small you're moving up. As long as you're moving the needle forward, at the end of the day, that is what really matters. But obviously, you definitely want to move the needle as forward as possible because inflation does exist and just making 5000 more this year than you did last year doesn't really mean anything because inflation exists. That extra $5,000 ain't going to do much for your gas, you know what I'm saying? But all jokes aside, that's why I wanted to make this video because yes, I can address how to be financially stable, but that's kind of like the long-term view of how to get there. But if you're feeling financially unstable right now, there's some things I want you to do that are going to help you reach your goals and become better with your finances. Now, of course, I'm just a talking head on your screen, so I don't know you. I don't know your personal situation. You know what I'm saying? But I do have a website and I do have free sessions if you still want some clarification after this video on your specific situation. I also have paid options, but that's another story for another day. Anyway, the first thing I want you to do is look at your exact situation and ask yourself, why do I feel financially unstable? Because I do have to realize we all have different ways of viewing what financially stable or financially unstable actually is. Is it because you don't feel like you make enough money? Is it because you feel like you're drowning in debt? Is it because you don't have the savings you want to? Is it because you feel like you're just one paycheck away from being broke? Like if you miss your next paycheck, you might be screwed. Is it because you set your 401k up too late? Like what is your specific reason for actually feeling financially unstable? Are you relying on somebody? Can you pay all your bills? Because let me tell you something. We all have very relative views of what it means to be financially stable. There's a lot of people in this world who feel financially unstable, yet they're able to pay their bills. They look like they're living a good life on the inside. They have nice cars. They have nice places to live. They eat good food. But what does their bank account look like? That's what it's going to boil down to is what does your bank account look like and how do you want it to look? So once you ask yourself that question, now you ask yourself, what can I do right now to fix my financial situation? And before we even jump into that, I guarantee at least one of your reasons for feeling financially unstable has a little bit to do with the fact that you're probably comparing yourself with someone else. 
be comparing yourself to somebody that's working in a field that you wanted to go to initially, but you decided to change your mind and you went the easier route, or you just went a different route in general, but you don't make as much money. You might be comparing yourself to them, thinking they're making so much more money than you. You might be comparing yourself to your boss. You might be you might be comparing the fact that you have debt and your friend next door doesn't have any debt. You might be comparing cars. You might be comparing apartments or houses. You might just be comparing careers in general. And all of these things can make a person actually feel like they're financially unstable. And whatever financially unstable to you is, that is fine. I'm not here to really define what it means because it has a lot of different definitions. It's very like up to what the person thinks. But just like I was saying earlier, if you truly do feel unstable in your finances, now you have to ask yourself this question. What can I do right now? to make my finances a little bit better. I'm not asking you to change the whole world. I'm not asking you to pay off every cent of your debt right now or to make 100,000 more dollars a year right now. I'm not asking you to have a year's worth of expenses in your savings account right now. I'm asking you, what can you do? What can you commit to right now that will improve your personal finances? And you can't tell me there's no way for you to do that because there's always a way. We have the internet. If you literally didn't know, you could Google it and find a few ideas just by doing that. You can hit up YouTube and find a few ideas by doing that. You can actually just watch my channel, you know what I'm saying, and figure out a few ways to improve your personal finances, including this video. But my point is you have to ask yourself the right questions when you get into these situations, because I know what it's like to feel like you're unstable and like you there's really no hope and like you don't know what to do. And it makes you feel like a victim and it makes you kind of curl into a corner like, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. And then you get so stressed out that you do nothing but think about the situation that you're in, which by the way is completely counterintuitive. I've done it, that's how I know it's counterintuitive. And you know, when life backs you into a corner like that, you have to do something about it or it's gonna keep doing that for the rest of your adult life. And I don't know about you, but uh, I'm a fighter. Ain't nobody backing me into a corner and me not do something about it, I'm just saying. So you have to wake up, so to speak, in that situation and look at what the situation is. Even if you have to write down every financial problem you have right now, a lot of times what we do is we overcomplicate our problems and we make them seem much bigger than they really are. But if you write it down on a piece of paper, you might have between five and seven problems. And that's on the extreme side. You might really only have two to three problems. And all you do is you work on one of them at a time. That's it. Just work on one issue at a time as much as you possibly can and that's going to narrow it down and you're going to continue to get better and like i said you look in that mirror every day okay i fixed this just like for those of you who like to work out and stay in good shape you know what i'm saying you might have ran an extra mile today you might have worked a little harder in the gym today you might have lifted five pounds heavier today that's you're doing better than you did yesterday you're doing better than you did last week last month last year same thing for your finances. You look at your budget, how it was last month, how is it this month? Are you doing better or worse? Or are you doing the exact same? You've got to set these standards for yourself so you never feel unstable again because the whole point of budgeting, and that's just an example, but the whole point of budgeting and looking at your finances on a regular basis is to be in control. And when you're in control, you are no longer unstable. So for example, if saving is your issue, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you're saving at the end of the month instead of the beginning of the month. Maybe you're paying all your bills and then maybe you're paying for everything that you want and everything that you need outside of your bills and then you're saving. Maybe you're just forgetting to save altogether. And, you know, when saving is a problem, both those issues that I just brought up might be facts because maybe you have to wait until the end of the month or wait until all the expenses are covered. I get that. And so that's why I always say automate your savings and then just do a little less than you think you can actually do if you want to save two hundred dollars but you don't know because you might not be able to pay all your bills and all your needs and everything after that cool instead of two hundred dollars i'm going to automate a hundred dollars and then 150 and then 175 and and then once you see what you can comfortably do that's the point of this it's going to take a little bit of work i'm not going to sit here and motivate you all day and say like it's going to be okay like it's it's going to be okay once you take full control of your financial situation i promise you that's when it's going to be okay but you can't just keep letting life in your financial situation no matter how unfortunate it is you can't let it keep beating you up every single day there's got to be a time where you stand up and rise against whatever adversity is going on in your life 
And again, adversity is something that's also relative. My problems might not seem like they're anything compared to what you're going through and vice versa, right? And you can say that about anybody else. It's about you understanding what your problems are and figuring out a way to fix them and then going to the next level, figuring out how to prevent them. That's what this whole conversation is about, how to prevent ever feeling financially unstable again. And as you have a strong watch on what's going on with your finances month after month and after you're able to see how much you're able to save this month and the next month and the next month, then you'll be comfortable. Then you'll have your number in your head. Because chances are you're going to know exactly how much money is going in your bank account every month, but you might not always know how much money is coming out because there's always going to be hidden expenses. Like if you have a car, you might need to get your registration renewed. You might need to get routine maintenance done on it every now and then. There's going to be a time where your rent goes up if you're living in an apartment. If you have a gym membership, there's going to be at least twice a year where they charge you a little extra, like I think $20 extra for maintenance fees for the gym itself and renovations and all those other things. There might be a month where there's family gatherings and you're spending so much money on like the food or maybe you're having a cookout or something. See, where I'm from, we call it a cookout. But what I'm learning here is out west, they call it a barbecue. Either way, when you're outside cooking on the grill with your family, you know what I'm saying, you might end up spending more that month. You might have kids. You might have medical bills. You might have a pet. They might have medical bills. So you gotta track, track, track. I'm, I'm telling you, if you track for six months very closely you will get very very good at it and you will get to the point where you just know all right this is how much is coming in this is how much is going out every single month but this month is an exception because of this this and this like you're just going to know off the top of your head and I, I i would recommend anybody who feels financially unstable to watch my video on how to master budgeting and saving money i think that's probably the most slept on video i have to date and the reason i say that is because you know what I'm saying? I didn't get that many views on it. You know what I mean? Which is fine. I know the people who did watch it got value, but I'm just saying that video right there, it breaks down the game behind budgeting and saving pretty seamlessly. And I give you visual representation. So I'm just saying. So I'm just saying if you want to get better with that, I'm telling you, watch that video, you will be golden. But also apply what you learn in that video too. So what are other things you can do to improve your financial situation? Sometimes what you can do without really doing anything is actually learning and just gaining that knowledge like pick up a book you know what i'm saying i started off with dave ramsey and from there i just went on to other videos and other people robert kiyosaki and i just kept going and kept going and kept going and i took things that i agree with and i took things that i didn't agree with because here's the thing your personal financial situation is going to be specific to you so there's not always going to be advice that gurus or experts or people like myself, which I, I don't consider being either. I'm just a guy who's learned from my own mistakes that wants to then give value to the people who are watching my videos. There's no advice that we can give online influencers, YouTubers, authors, real estate investors. There's no real advice that we can all give you that's all going to apply to you because it's not necessarily a one size fits all. Most of it might, but there's going to be something you're like, eh, doesn't really apply to me. Does that mean you just discard all the advice? No, you take the good stuff and you discard the stuff that you don't agree with. And while you have that stuff discarded that you don't agree with, look into it. Look into why you disagree with it. Does it really not fit your situation or is it just something that is so like uncommon? Like, is it such an uncommon way of thinking that you think that it's not going to work for you? That's what I used to think specifically about investing. People used to tell me all the time, Reggie, just invest in the stock market. I was like, yeah, no, no thanks. The moment I put my money in there, the stock market will crash. Then I'll be looking sad. Like that's, that's what I used to think. I thought it was like a gamble. I thought it was like a game of chance, but it's, it's really not. Like after I've done my research and I learned more about it, it's nothing like that. Anyway, this video is not about investing, but if you want more investing videos, let me know. Whenever I post them though, don't nobody be wanting to watch them. So I ain't made them in a while. But anyway, that's what you can do. And if you feel financially unstable, I promise you, you can afford to buy a 10, 20, even $30 book that breaks down personal finances. And if you can't right now, save up for a book. And I know there ain't really nothing hip about reading or learning for that matter, but I mean, that's what successful people do. That's how you succeed in life. You've got to educate yourself continuously, especially about things that you're falling short on right now. That's the only way you're going to get the mindset and the information to improve. That's what people don't understand. Like self-improvement will make your life better. Doing the self-improvement isn't sexy. It isn't fun, but the results are. 
It's like when you go to the gym, you know what I'm saying? You work on yourself, you eat right, you look better. People are more attracted to you. When you continuously feed yourself information that's going to help you in life, your bank account is going to show it. And that's going to reflect in your confidence. So read the books. They'll probably be between 15 and $35. And what I would do if I were you so you don't overwhelm yourself is what I would do, I would read one book at a time, one chapter at a time, and I would break every single thing down. Another thing you can do is see what options are available to you. Like, for example, I always broadcast this on my channel. And, and people actually have been signing up lately. Thank you a lot for that. But, you know, whenever I see, I have things on my channel. For example, I have my Patreon, $5 a month. I give you in-depth insight on things that I don't talk about on this channel when it comes to personal finance. And I really dive deep into certain things, especially stuff like investing. I love talking about that. I will not stop talking about it. But if it's more beneficial to talk about it on my Patreon, that's where I'm going to talk about it at. And, any, and just so you know, any Patreon subscriber that I have, they can ask me whatever question they want, and I will answer it either through text or in a video. No lie. And also, I have my website, and this is what I was talking about earlier when I said people have been signing up for this lot lately, is the free coaching session. I also have paid coaching sessions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have a lot of value to add on my website. And you know, if you need that coaching, if you need that guidance, if you just want somebody to tell you what they think for free... Hit me up on my website. I don't know everything, but man, I, I know a lot about this stuff. I've seen a lot. I've coached a lot of people through it, and I've helped people get good results. Just saying. So that's how you can start. Because if you know in the back of your head, oh, I have an issue with this, but I don't really know what to do about it. And then you read a book. And by the way, I have a book coming out. Once you read a book and it actually goes over the generalities about everything about personal finances, then you're like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you could automate your savings account. I didn't know there was a such thing as a high yield savings account. I didn't know there were more than one method to pay off debt. I didn't know that the avalanche method was the fastest way to pay off debt. I didn't know that putting money into an index fund just a few years ago would have 3x my money. I didn't know there was a such thing as passive income. These were the things I was saying to myself. Not all of them, but most of them. These were things I was saying to myself when I first started reading up and learning about personal finances and what to do with your money and stuff like that. And it's really fascinating. It's, it's, once you actually start reading, like it's actually really fascinating. Some books even walk you through how to do your taxes and how to avoid certain taxes by, you know what I'm saying? Like if you go into business for yourself or if you do a side hustle and you make good money from it, they can tell you how to file your taxes properly. Like stuff like this ain't taught in no school, not schools that I've seen at least. And so another thing and another thing is like, think about the stuff that you know you don't know how to do. Like there's so many people who that for the life of them, they cannot interview worth two cent. Don't y'all know the thing that's between you and your dream job is one, obviously the skill, but two, the interview. Don't you know that? So if I know I'm not good at interviewing, I'm going to learn everything I can about interviewing, the psychology behind it, what to wear, how to smell, how to, you know what I'm saying? You, what, what cologne I'm wearing today. Don't talk like that during the interview though. That's improper grammar. You want to be proper in the interview, <laughs> but this is how I talk for real. So this is just how I am in real life. So I'm, this is how I'm talking to you in this video. Anyway, how is my body language supposed to be? How am I supposed to look? How, how is the eye contact supposed to be? Do I need a haircut or not? Handshaking. I mean, just the basic parts of the interview. How to answer interviewing questions. What structure? Because there is, in fact, a structure that you're actually supposed to answer interviewing questions in. I'm telling you, look this stuff up. So, like, if you're complaining and saying that, man, I don't make enough money, what can you do to make more money? What skills can you learn to make more money? And then, how can you learn more about interviewing to then make sure you land that job? And also think about this. What is more money anyway? What would you do with it? Because what a lot of people do is they upgrade their lifestyle and then complain about the same things they were complaining about before they got more money. So, and that's not a judgment. I'm just saying that that's just what I see. That's 90% of people right there in a nutshell. That's how they handle their money. So if you know you have issues right now, think with the mindset of if I had more money, this is what I would do with it. And I wouldn't upgrade. I would pretend like this amount of money doesn't exist and I'll put the rest of it here. That's how you want to think about it because now you're creating a system where you will no longer ever feel financially unstable because you're going to be so stable, in fact, that you're like, I'm keeping everything the same. The living conditions, the same. Car, the same. Monthly expenses, the same. But what I'm going to do with this extra money is I'm going to put some of it in my savings account. Some of it's going to go into my debt. 
or some of it's going to my savings account, some of it's going toward investments or whatever you so choose. But the idea is you use that money to elevate your net worth and get to where you want to be. I just gave y'all a lot of things that you can actually work on to improve it. And out of that, there's something you could do, even if that one thing is just reading a book or even if that one thing is just budgeting. And then write down the lessons you learned. Don't just let the stuff go over your head. And if you don't understand it, read it again. Read the chapter again. Read the whole book again. Like, There's no shame in not understanding something that you're not used to learning about in the first place. Not a lot of us grew up with the advantage of having financial education and understanding what to do with your personal finances. Not everyone makes enough money to be able to do all the things they want and pay their bills and have investments and have no debt. And those things alone can make you feel financially unstable. Because if you don't have the knowledge, then you don't know what you don't know. You don't understand the mistakes that you're making right now. Just like I didn't understand the mistakes I was making back then. I didn't know about the cost of living. So I put myself in a situation. It wasn't a bad, bad situation. It was just I could have saved more money per month. And I had big savings goals back then. So if I wanted to reach them, I could have just, you know, had a single bedroom apartment instead of getting a big townhouse all to myself. It was just me. That really wasn't a wise decision on my part. But I didn't know what I didn't know back then. My motto back then was I can afford it. Yeah, but you're not going to reach your goal that way. You, you can afford a lot of things, but you know what I'm saying? If you're living paycheck to paycheck, technically you can afford everything you have, because but you're just barely affording it. You don't want to barely just be able to afford anything because that's right on the brink of financial instability. It's not what we want around here, not on this channel. And then lastly, you want to ask yourself, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Because what I find is, you know, when a lot of folks are feeling like they're financially unstable, when they feel like they're not making enough money, when they feel like they're drowning in debt, when they're not budgeting properly, when they're not saving properly, when a lot of stuff just isn't going the right way, like a lot of times they don't have a plan. And that's what the biggest key to this is, is having an actual plan. And I say 10 years because I want you to think long term. Like this year, you know what I'm saying? You might not feel good. You might feel like you're down this year. You might feel like your credit card debt is eating you alive this year. But what about 10 years from now? Is future you going to be worrying about the stuff that you're worrying about right now? Probably not. In fact, you probably want the future version of yourself to have forgotten about everything that happened this time ago, 10 years ago, because you've come so far between now and then. So start small. You can just look at yourself now like, okay, me this year doesn't have a budget, doesn't have more than $5,000 in their savings account, has debt, and isn't making the amount of money they want to be making. Okay, well, what does next year you look like? Well, next year me budgets every single month, never misses a month for anything, is making improvements with each and every month that we go by. Even if it's just $5 improvements, it doesn't matter. We're making improvements every single month. The me that exists a year from now is taking the steps, they're reading the books, you know what I'm saying? They're getting the education and they're learning how to get better with finances. And on top of that, the me a year from now is getting better at their career so they can position themselves to move up. That's just one year. That's a big difference. If you never had that plan, if you never saw that for yourself, you would still be repeating the same cycle for years and years and years, holding on to a hope. Because usually when you ask people that are in these situations what their plan is or what they want to do, they just tell you about their hopes and their dreams. That does not equate to success. Anybody can hope and dream, but not everybody plans and not everybody applies everything that they have in their plan. And everything in your plan ain't going to go as planned because you know, we're human. We're not perfect. But it sets everything in motion for you to get to your success goal. And who's to say that the you 10 years from now, you know what I'm saying, isn't making a quarter million a year? And it's not unrealistic. It's 10 years we're talking about. It's only unrealistic if you don't put forward effort to get there in 10 years. And you may or may not get there in 10 years. But the point is the fact that you set the goal it's going to put you in a position to actually get there faster than you would than if you didn't do it. Because I can say, I want to make, you know what I'm saying, $2.5 million a year. But if I don't do anything toward that goal, I'm just talking, wishful thinking. That's like saying, well, my dream is to win the lottery. But if I don't play the lottery, first of all, playing the lottery, you have very, very little chance. You're more likely to be struck by lightning than winning the lottery. I just want to put that out there. And uh, I'm gonna tell you something, I don't know a single person who's been struck by lightning. But in that same token, if I say that's my dream to win the lottery, but I never play the lottery, how, how? Is somebody gonna win it for me? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, even if your goals seem unrealistic, you have to 
have a plan in place and you have to start working towards it. You can't just wishfully say, oh yeah, I wish 2.5 million would just drop into my lap. Like God is just gonna snap his fingers and boom, there's your 2.5. You'll never appreciate it that way. So what I'm saying is, as I wrap up this video, what I'm saying is this. Look at the situation you have now. Look at what you have to do right now and educate yourself and then put yourself in a position where you never have to feel this way again. Envision yourself where you wanna be, write it down, look at it every day, work toward it every day, and eventually you will never feel financially unstable again. But you have to see yourself there. You have to want it, you have to work toward it, you have to move the needle every single day. That's my soapbox. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Check out my book, check out my website, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'll let you guys know what the price point for my book is once it comes out August 14th, but I'm super excited about it and it's coming out in hardback, paperback, audiobook, and ebook, so be on the lookout for that. Super excited about it. Also, hit me up on Patreon. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.